How's it going, everybody? Today, I want to talk to you about this year's new TVs that are on the horizon from LG and Samsung specifically. And the reason why I'm focusing on them is because they are going to have the flagship OLED TVs, mainly the G4 from LG and then the S95D from Samsung. What's really interesting about these two TVs is going to be the fact that they may be using new panels. Now, I do not know for a fact if these TVs are going to use these new panels, but let's say hypothetically that they might use these panels. What can we expect from these new panels from LG Display and Samsung Display? When it comes to brightness, they're both getting an increase up to 3000 nits. Now that's pretty unheard of for an OLED TV. Historically, OLED TVs haven't been something that could get very bright, but now we're starting to see brightness figures rise each year. Now, whether or not the TVs are going to be able to achieve 3000 nits, that's another story. And we need to find out if they're going to be using these panels in the first place. But if they are using these panels, that means that TVs are capable of hitting 3000 nits, but it does not mean that the electronics companies that are making these TVs are necessarily going to be able to achieve that. Hopefully that makes sense. So yes, the panels are going to be capable of 3000 nits, but we've seen in the past that TV manufacturers can struggle to get to the brightness levels that the display is even capable of. When the display company is claiming a certain brightness level, the TV companies just aren't able to get there yet. So don't get your hopes up on hitting 3000 nits with these new OLED TVs. But if we can get anywhere close to that, then I think we're going to be in for a very awesome year. Now let's focus purely on the electronics side of things. LG Electronics and Samsung Electronics. What happened last year when these two battled it out? Well, we saw price matches. The S95C was going to match the price of the LG G3 no matter what. So the LG G3 dropped in price throughout the year. S95C followed the same path. I expect much of the same to happen this year. We also saw that Samsung wasn't only aligning the G3 and the S95C together, but they were going to compete with the LG C3 with their S90C and the S90C ended up being one of the better values of the year because of that. Because you could have TV technology that was essentially in the A95L and the S95C in your S90C, that's the same price as an LG C3. So you can see why a lot of people were gravitating towards the S90C, and of course this year you're going to have the S90D as well. Now, whether or not the S90D is going to be having the new panel, I would say that's a very big long shot. But that doesn't mean that there's not a chance at the panel lottery. As far as what to expect from brightness with the S90D, I wouldn't be surprised if it hit the same brightness levels as the S95C. Now the S90C was slightly less bright than the S95C, but when I compared them in actual daylight or when I compared them in the dark, you hardly saw a difference. So while there was measurable differences, visually, I don't think many people would be able to tell. And that's why I still think that the S90C might be a very good bargain this year, even with the S90D and the S95D available. Now, if you're a fan of LG and you're just looking for the brightest OLEDs possible, LG really does know how to deliver this. The G3 last year, ended up being the brightest OLED TV that I saw. And it stayed that way. They were able to deliver white brightness brighter than any other OLED TV that I've ever experienced before. So that's really cool. And I think we're gonna see much of the same this year, especially if they're utilizing that new panel. Just think about some of the highlights, if they can get to the capability of pushing 3000 nits. Yeah, I think we'd be in for a treat. Now the G3 was one of my favorite TVs of the year in regards to picture pop for movies and TV shows, but it did fall short a little bit with gaming in mind because the color brightness just wasn't as good as outside of game mode. And that's been the case for a couple of years now. So it's nothing new with the G3, but it was more noticeable with the G3 because they had an increase in colors with the G3. So my hope for 2024 is that the LG G4 is going to fix this issue now maybe they don't want to do this because they're afraid of long-term burning concerns i'm not sure it might be by design that they do it this way but i know that every other tv company really doesn't go this route and samsung for a fact has really good color brightness in game mode as does sony with the a95l i'm not really sure why this is that they do this or maybe it's just an oversight by LG. If it is an oversight by LG, hopefully it is something that they've listened to feedback on and addressed for 2024. So there was pros and cons to both the S95C and the LG G3 last year, but I would say one of the bigger cons to the S95C was 
for gamers regarding the One Connect box having some dropout issues, especially when you were playing at 144Hz. That was a fairly disappointing thing for a lot of people. I heard a lot of feedback from that that people wouldn't be buying an S95C because of the One Connect box. And that's a really disappointing thing to hear. I haven't heard any changes to the One Connect box this year, so I would expect that if there was issues with it last year, there might be issues with it this year in regards to that. It's something we're definitely going to have to test. Before you buy an S95D if you're a gamer and you're worried about those dropouts, definitely stay tuned to the channel. Now aside from the S95C's One Connect issues, I would say the biggest issue for the S95C was the fact that the S90C existed. We already talked about how you could barely tell them apart in a lot of content, so why would anybody really want to go with an s 90 c over an S90C? Sure, it can get a little bit brighter, but there was no reason to want to step up to the S95C other than the One Connect box if you really needed that. Aside from the brightness capabilities, there is going to be some new changes for 2024. The G4 is getting a new processor, and the S95D is now getting an anti-reflective layer on top of the TV to make it easier to see in brighter rooms. Now, there is a lot of controversy around this topic, so I'm not going to go too deep into it. You either like it or you don't like it. I've heard both sides of the discussion with that. But what I want to talk about is going to be the performance side of things. How are these TVs going to separate this year? Because last year, I would say I give the slight edge to Samsung because they are using that QD OLED panel. And so you probably are going to give them a slight edge this year as well, but we also have to factor in processing into the mix. Now, when it comes to low bitrate streaming, I would say that both Samsung and LG are equally behind Sony in regards to that, as when I compare them to each other in low bitrate content, they perform fairly similar, and they are definitely behind the Sony in that case. So that's going to be something that we look for in 2024, whether or not they are going to be better at streaming movies and TV shows than their previous models. Now you have to think that LG is going to have a leg up here with the new processor, the A11 processor. If you're not familiar, LG is getting a processing upgrade for the G4. This is the first time in a while that LG has made a big leap with their processor. Now there's not a ton of real information on how a lot of this stuff is going to be achieved, but they did talk about some of the features at CES that is going to be used with their TVs. One of the biggest things that they are highlighting is their ability to make AI Picture Pro even smarter than it was before. And there's even an AI directorial mode, which is going to be a way to use the AI picture modes, but also keep the director's intent to a certain degree. Now I say a certain degree because I don't know exactly what we're going to expect from some of these modes and I'm going to leave that up to the experts to decide if it's going to follow the creator's intent or not. That's not really my field of play. I feel like I'm going to be a bigger fan of the AI Picture Pro mode as that's going to deliver a lot of the features that I like in a TV more so than any other. Things like enhancing sharpness and clarity in the right spots of the object to make it feel like you have a clearer image with a lot more depth than it originally had. And there's definitely a crowd of people that want to turn this feature off right away, but I think the majority of people that are going to want to have this TV will probably have it on. Personally, I'm very excited for these new 2024 TVs, but I don't think it's going to be something that you gotta rush out and upgrade last year's TV or the year prior to that. It's nothing like that. More like if you haven't upgraded in a while, now maybe that's the time to do it with these new iterations. The G4 with the new processor and the S95D with the new brightness capability. If you're okay with the TV coding. So we have the S95D and we have the LG G4 and then we have the S90D. And I think we have to include the S90D and even the S90C and the G3 in the mix because they're all going to be competing with these TVs this year. And if there's not a big margin of separation, I would maybe say go with 2023 TVs at the end of the day, but we need to figure that out and find that out ourselves when these TVs release. We don't know prices or release dates just yet, but once I get that information, I'll make sure I post it right here on this channel. So make sure you're subscribed and please hit that notification bell for notifications so that you can be alerted when I do my next live stream or post my next video. So you might've noticed that I left Sony off of this 
this list. And that's because this year we have no idea what they're doing in 2024, but we know they're not going to be doing anything special with OLED TVs in regards to flagships. So they're not really in this OLED TV battle for 2024. It's really just the S95D and the LG G4. And if you want to carry over the A95L, we're definitely going to compare it to these new TVs because it's really the best TV that you can buy right now. And I did a review of that TV. It turns out to be really good. But I also saw what Sony was up to at CES 2024 with their mini LED technology. And that's a video that you're going to definitely want to check out right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one.